Hey, buddy. What's up? That's Albie Dog. He's a good trail dog. Can you sit? Maybe? Oh, that's a good boy. You want to hang out? Okay. What's up, dudes? So uh, I'm out here uh, doing a final uh, video review of my Da Vinci Cycles Django 29. Uh, uh, I wanted to tell you guys why I chose to ride this bike this season uh, and how it's worked out over the past couple of thousand miles of uh, trail riding and stage races and cross country riding and all, all the stuff I've been doing. So it's, uh, the basics are, it is a, uh, a 130 in the front, 120 in the back, uh, split pivot design. It's a Dave Weagle design. You can Google up all the specifics of that. Uh, I will tell you, having ridden a bunch of DW links and other other suspension designs, I feel like it it pedals very well. Maybe not as well as the DW Link, but it's a uh, it's a it's a more economical, uh, cheaper design, which allows for a a a better price bike, a cheaper price bike. Uh, it's to me, it feels you know consistently very supple uh very forgiving through all sorts of aggressive stuff i tend to ride stuff that is consistently very technical so i'm not trying to pedal super hard so i don't notice the uh the lack of super solid pedaling platform and i actually will with this i'll switch the shock into uh hey hey buddy uh into trail mode not descend mode when i'm in stuff that's not super aggressive and i will actually lock out the rear end if i'm climbing a, a you know a long gravel road or a long paved climb like i would out at like blue hills or something doing a you know in zero hill repeats uh it's got it's kind of got like a medium to long wheelbase it's got uh whatever the bottom bracket height is i don't know the number offhand it happens to be perfect for pedaling through rock gardens and stuff on the uh on the east coast because uh, that's that's an issue we have here with um with our bikes is they can't be as long, low and slack as they can be, but they won't work as well. <laughs> um, uh, you know, as a, as a West Coast bike, does that make any sense? Uh, so in the West, you know, you're generally climbing up something, descending down something, you can kind of keep your pedals level. I don't think you're, from my experience, you're not pedaling through as many rocks and roots and sort of undulations in the, tra uh, in the trail as you are out here. So that's something I run into riding you know, a more uh, long, low slack geometry bike is I'm going to be hitting my hitting my cranks and uh, and also our stuff here. It's 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 can be tight and twitchy and you know that's kind of that's our style. Um, so you need something that's going to work on that and then it's not going to suck too badly when you go out west. Like sure, yeah, you may be more comfortable on something a little bit longer and and lower, but uh, you're going to suffer out here. Or uh, I mean, I see some guys work it out. Me personally, I like to ride something that's kind of more conservative as far as uh, wheelbase, head angle, uh, and you know, with a higher higher bottom bracket. Uh, so what I did do is I did put in the um, the headset, uh, the larger headset cup or chip, I guess what you call it. Uh, so that slackened out the head angle a half a degree, and then it does have this little flip chip in the rear that allows you to slacken the head angle or steepen it half a degree very quickly. Uh, the headset cup's kind of just in there. So uh, I think it, it comes at 68.5 in the high position, and then you can slacken it to 68 with the chip. It goes down to 67.5. And that's kind of just where I, I let it hang out. I did do some more cross-country stuff and stage racy sort of stuff up in Vermont where I did flip that the, the chip back in the, uh, in the seat stay so that it uh, steepened it back to 68 degrees. It is funny that that's now considered steep, uh, considering you know, what we used to run for, for head angles. But I uh, took off the big two, two, three, five, we're in zero E trail tires, um, and I put on some Vittorio Barzo 225s, flipped that chip, I had a 68 head angle with these little tires, and the thing felt like a cross country bike. and mostly just kept it in trail mode for the less, less chunky Vermont trails, and it, it felt awesome. You could feel, feel the difference yeah, right now I've got on the um, a combination of pretty heavy duty uh, Vittoria Enduro style tires. I've got a Mota and I've got a Martello in the back. The, uh, the Mota is like pretty wide open, looks like a motocross tire. It's really good in loose conditions, in mud and wet. And I find it really, it does stick to a lot of these, um, these moss covered rocks that are super, super slippery. 
And, uh, and the Martello is actually probably one of the best tires I've used for that, where it's, you know, it's got a lot, it's got closely spaced knobs with a lot of siping and it just sticks to, uh, to the green rocks here uh, in Massachusetts and, and in New England like nothing else. Can you stop that please? My dog's eating a tree. He's a goat. He's a goat, I swear to God, dude. He's a freaking goat. A couple of things I did do is I did, I thrashed the uh, the original wheel set. So I do have a set of Stan's Flow rims on there that are uh, uh, laced up to some DT Swiss 305 hubs, which are more than adequate. They work really well and they're really a flattable dude. And uh, I did swap everything out to a full Shimano XT drivetrain, uh, Shimano XT brakes and uh, I'm just a Shimano guy on mountain bike. Actually, I do prefer SRAM for road. It's not a political thing for me. You know, bikes and bike components are definitely not uh, something where I'm like, rah, rah, Shimano. You know, it's just like, it's what works, what I like better. Uh, so I do find, I do like the the smoothness and the uh, the reliability of my Shimano system and the brakes. Uh, I don't think you can beat them. I did put on a little taco bash guard for some of these ups and downs, these steep things that we do uh, where there's a possibility of hitting your chain ring even with a 30 on, which is, is what I've got, uh, which I think I've got the 30 and then the whatever it is, 46 in the rear, and that's, that's adequate for what I do. Um, yeah, we have, we have a little bit different uh, needs as far as bikes go on the East Coast from the West Coast. So I find, uh, you know, I need a bike that's going to roll up as well as it rolls down. Uh, I need something that, you know, is quick enough and light enough and responsive enough and accurate enough that I can go up these pretty intricate things and throw the bike around and, you know, and then, you know, have something that's aggressive enough, brilliant enough to go down these things and, and do the little like XC hucks. You know, I don't think anything pictured today was, uh, that, you know, it's going to be in this video is too, too psycho, but uh, I do my, my little XC hucks. What's up, buddy? What's up? What do you think? What do you think? Did I tell them everything about the, the Django? Did I tell them everything? Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, go get it. Oh, he just he just hit that XC hawk like nobody's business. Albi Dog freaking sends it, dude. I don't know what else to tell you. I think I'm sure there's other stuff I need to tell you about this bike, but um I don't have anything bad to say about it. I guess that I think uh the reason why I bought this bike was because I had ridden the Django in the 27.5 version and I'd ridden the Troy and the Troy was a little too long, low and slack and a little, I mean, it was like too much bike for the kind of stuff I ride. Uh, I thought it was really great going downhill. Uh, if I was gonna go hit the park or, uh, you know, ride stuff that was more like, you know, climb a fire road and then like blast, blast downhills, that is a superior bike to my bike. But uh, I rode the 27.5 and I just felt like I'm not, and that's also, I'm not, uh, I'm not political about, uh, hey, quiet not political about wheel size or dedicated or married to a, a wheel size. I, I like 27.5 bikes. I like the 2.6s on the 27.5. I like some plus sometimes. Uh, I just probably won't ride it. I actually have a 26er beach cruiser that I ride around the city. But uh, yeah, no, I, I feel like the, the 29 actually works better for a lot of the slower speed stuff we're doing here with the, with the rocks in the way and you're coming into a corner and there's like, all these chunks and so i think it, at slow speed i don't feel like suspension does the same job as that 29 inch wheel so i think for for this kind of stuff uh 29 works better so i was i was psyched when they came up with the django 29 i jumped right on it it's a very similar bike to you know say like an intense primer or a pivot cycle is mach 429 trail but that is like it is probably the like that amount of travel and those angles and that wheelbase it's you know sub 1200 wheelbase 67 68 head angle um that's it's kind of a sweet spot for like the actual do everything reality bike like i might you know think about getting a bigger bike but i'm not really going to push that bike to its limit out doing the stuff i'm doing where you know this thing i'll go out and ride you know 30 40 miles uh you know i've even i've taken it to the bike park i took it to the thunder uh, i was maybe a little too little bike out at thunder but uh, it's super versatile and it's, it's, uh, it's for what I actually ride. It's for what a lot of people actually ride. And uh, it's, been, it's been awesome. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you wanna go see some Da Vinci bikes uh, in person, in bike, 
uh, locally in the in the Boston area, go see uh, go see JRA Cycles up in uh, Medford, Massachusetts. All right, and uh, you know, hit me up. I'm sure I forgot a bunch of stuff about it, but I mean, I've ridden this bike absolutely ragged, and uh, that's the other thing. It is held up great. I've done no other than like a new chain and the wheels. Uh, I mean, it's held up incredibly well. No no pivot service, uh, and actually no suspension service. Yeah, I should probably do that before I sell it. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been pretty incredible. And yeah, and Da Vinci Cycles have a lifetime warranty on the frame. Uh, and they come in a little bit cheaper than some of the, uh, the DW Link bikes uh, to begin with, and then lifetime warranty. It's uh, it's a pretty pretty good deal. Uh, so check out Da Vinci, check out JRA Cycles, and uh, yeah, hit me up with questions. I'll answer them. Be nice. All right, see you out there. <laughs>